understand or hopefully understand is that we've went through, you know, a really, really interesting period of transition, right? And that period of transition has looked like two things. So one, from a current economic impact, when we talk with um, folks in the industry, right? So MSPs and to a certain extent vendors as well. And we ask, has the marketing pipeline been impacted by economic conditions? Um, 54% of them say it's worse than expected. Um, and that their sales velocity um, uh, is 81% of them say it's worse than expected. Now, that could sound like bad news unless you look at the percentage of people that say it's better than expected and start to unpack for those folks who have a better marketing plan um, than they thought they would, marketing pipeline, I'm sorry, than they thought they would, that 15%, and whose sales velocity has been impacted positively. Um, despite economic conditions, you start to see some changes that they've made that their competitors who are saying, hey, I'm not doing as well with my marketing pipeline didn't do. And it starts with one specific thing, that the percent of a buyer's journey spent with sales is rapidly mm. declining. And so what they're doing, they used to spend 51% of their time with sales, 17% of their time with sales. Where are they spending their time? In self-education, in their trusted networks on social media, online, um, you know, exploring options. So this changes how we think about marketing because it's no longer about just awareness, a traditional role, but it's also about exploring options and comparing solutions. And sales is much more towards the closing of the negotiating now than it's ever been. And so as we look at that, that I think is the most seminal and interesting that, that we're seeing right now. And so what it means is this need to jumpstart your brand as an MSP has never been more critical because you can't outsell this. You just physically can't. You will be in the 81% of the people who say their funnel is below where they want it to be for their business because they're not marketing effectively. The folks that are saying it's above where I want to be, it's a Hundred percent in tack on that, right? It's to further expand that thinking. Is we're seeing the changes across all sizes and all industries, especially um, when we're in IT. So historically, when we think about top of the funnel marketing, we we think about demand generation. We think about okay, let's let's do uh, some downloadable ads or let's do a webinar and we'll get the leads. Now that's still important. However, prior to that. Building your brand is critical. As Janet mentioned, customers today, they have the web. And now with uh, AI, they can easily ask ChatGPT, you know, which vendor should I talk to? Or in fact, they, don't, they may not even know what vendor to look for. For example, if they can ask ChatGPT, how can I be ready with AI? Do you know how these generative AI look for information? And this is through some of the brand initiatives you put out there. So... If we were to provide a recipe, Janet, on how MSP should start thinking about building brands, and this is separate from demand generation, what are some of the, what, what would you say the first step that they should do? And we, we can go through like maybe three or four steps yeah. to, to, to make it practical. Well, the first thing I think is that you really need to understand who your ideal customer is, right? So if you don't know who your ideal customer is, then you end up shouting at the market in your marketing plan and your brand doesn't resonate. So we always recommend that you start with these. This is who I have as customers today. Or if you're new to the game, this is who I'd like as customers. Um, and what, you know, what things do they have? Where are they listening? Where are their watering holes? Where do they go for information? What network do they turn to for information? Because this is going to influence how and where I market. It's not only going to influence my message, my value prop, which is, you know, kind of the next step right after you say, this is my ideal customer or partner, if you're you know looking at it the other way around, um, then you can say, okay, this is what would resonate with them. These are the values that they're looking for for my business. This is how they're buying. And then this is where they're listening. This is where they're exploring. This is where they're um, experiencing, um, you know, these, these moments. And so I think that's something, it's so basic, but I think people really miss that fact that 
You may be in love with, um, you know, Facebook advertising, right? But if your ideal customer doesn't go there, doesn't go to their network there for help, isn't having the business discussions there about managed services, you're wasting more money. So, so we, we really start with the ideal customer and then we go to ideal message and then we go, where are they? Where's their watering hole? Hundred percent. And and to Janet's point, I always get the questions like, "Doc, should we be on TikTok? Should we be on LinkedIn? Should we be on Twitter?" I go prior to looking at those, those are channels, right? To, to what Janet described, where are your customers? Meet them where they are. So, for example, we as a software company, AppPoint, for our direct customers, meaning uh, uh, you know large customers or, or middle sized customers around the world, we know our buyers are on LinkedIn. So. The investments we make, right, for example, in sharing information is on LinkedIn, but we still right. need. Um, so so that's one where we deliver the, the content and information. But more importantly, the type of message, the type of content we create are dedicated to those audience. So our typical audience would be uh, IT folks or folks that are responsible for their cloud collaboration environment. Then we would provide information that they would normally look for. So for example, if, uh, if nobody knows AppPoint and um, we know for a fact that some of our potential customers would look for information around how do we back up Microsoft 365 data. When they run that search, we want to make sure we're the first ones to come up. So knowing that that's what they're going to look for, we would write a blog, a white paper, an ebook. So from an organic basis, when they look for that information, we show up. But at the same time, we take that information and then share it to where they are, as Janet mentioned. LinkedIn, it could be at events, it could be a trade show. So knowing your audience, knowing where they are, and also knowing the kind of information that they look for is critical. I agree. And one of the things we've seen on LinkedIn that I think is kind of very interesting is a lot of people used LinkedIn as a resume, right? It started as a job search uh, environment. And just this simple thing um, in our social selling program, and I'll talk more about that in a couple minutes, because I do think that's a critical skill that everybody should have. But just this one tweak for the sellers at an MSP resulted in a 17% increase in funnel. So here's the little secret. So most times sellers went on LinkedIn and they put together a profile that said account executive or account rep. And they said exceeded quota by 70% and, you know, hit my metrics and brought in 12 new accounts. And that's great if you're looking for a new sales job at an MSP. But as an MSP, typically you're looking for customers. And so if you go in and no longer say account executive, say something like account advisor, consultant, solution expert, whatever you want to call it. And then go down and change all your experiences to be what you did for customers. So you didn't hit quota 12 quarters in a row because you were good at sales. You hit quota 12 quarters in a row because you delivered what for clients, right? So instead of talking about, say, I helped more than 150 clients double their you know, cost efficiencies for their company, so on and so on and so forth. What security breaches down 50%. When you start doing that, you're going to start showing up in more and more searches. And since the most um, average thing somebody does before meeting with a salesperson uh, is they Google them. Uh, when they Google you, it pays a lot of money for the, the, your profile to come up first. They go on your profile and you look like an advisor, a consultant, not somebody who's trained to sell them. This exactly. results by 17% for the MSPs that did that simple change for their account representatives and themselves. So focus outwards on that LinkedIn profile instead of on your personal achievement. So just a little helpful hint on those folks that are using LinkedIn in a way to radically improve your marketing funnel you know, today. You see, the key is, as uh, Janet alluded to, right? People don't want to be sold to, but people want to buy, right? Correct. So so the first one where you got to know the audience, but quickly related to the second one is someone uh, something I, I talked about is um, you got to provide relevant content and relevant information. And when I say relevant content or information, I'm not talking about, you know, buyer products, right? 
So one of the strategies you you can do is really to build your brand as an expert, as a thought leader. I know thought leader is a, is a is an overused word, but but somebody that people want to listen to is provide your expertise. And being an MSP, you have a lot of expertise. And the way you demonstrate this is it could be again written content, blog, ebooks, where search engines can find, or in events like this, host a weekly uh, session on. I don't know. Are you ready for AI or how to protect your data in the cloud? So, and be consistent about it too. So, what we found that's effective is being that expert that people can learn from, and then through that you can build a relationship. And certainly, naturally, people reach out to you if they need help, right? So, so right. that one thing I've learned is people want to buy, but they don't want to be sold to. I agree, and I think right. also people want to talk but yes. they don't want to be talked to too. Um, and so one of the things we've seen is, you know, the more you engage with clients, customers, prospects, content on those social media platforms, the more you don't just like lazy, like, as I like to call it uh, folks content, but instead you actually engage. And so when you're one of your prospects posts, they're opening a new building, let's just say, Oh, here's our picture. Right. Asking questions, you know, how, how is that going? What are your major challenges? What are your major opportunities? Why did you move there? Um, on social media, the same way you would do it, right? If you saw them and they told you we opened a new a new business. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of that bi-directional conversation on social media as really um, boosting up that brand um, for MSPs. Absolutely. And then especially for customers, for a lot of the customers that, MSP serve our smaller organizations. So I find a lot of them are in places like Quora. So if you all are not from Quora, make sure you check out yeah. Quora. Um, uh, Spiceworks, uh, yeah. even Reddit to some extent. I know Reddit is sometimes questionable, but there's an audience and a community there. There so really is, yeah. You show up, you engage, you share your knowledge, and then you build your brand uh, through that. And then- and then yeah. showing up, which uh, Janet also talked about, is number three. I think you got to show up consistently, right? So showing up, certainly in online communities, your investment is your time and uh, 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 an effort. But at all, I say you show up in in-person events as best you can. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about, oh, you have to spend all this money and go to big conferences. Because your audience are most likely. Uh, local organizations. So show up in, I don't know, the local chamber of commerce or show up in any, any local events that your customers would be at. And if you can, maybe get yourself up on stage and share knowledge. I mean, even in my local community, I get invited to talk about how, how to secure your data on a personal level. So I, I do that more in a community service, but the people that show up are local business owners. So, so make sure you show up where they are, not just online. Yeah. And I will tell you, we have a client who we've been working obviously with a lot of MSPs um, in our, in our practice. That's what we do, right? We, we do demand, demand and lead generation for them, but some, you know, really basic block and tackle things are really starting to work. And, and I think part of that becomes because in a, in a time of fluctuation and change and look, we've got a lot going on, right? There's, there's, you know, just horrible, you know, stuff going on over in the Middle East. The economy is a little shaky. Nobody knows what's happening with housing. People tend to pull into their community in those moments, right? They tend to look less uh, farther abroad and more kind of in the home base. And so we've been working on campaigns with MSPs that kind of go back to some of the stuff we used to do. Like, yeah. for example, who is the biggest influencer in your local community? If you're an MSP, MSP is a 25 mile journey, right? For who they support. So who are the biggest business influencers? Who's the person everybody knows? Who's the head of your chamber of commerce? Who's the head of your welcoming new people into the you know, business opening or a retail association? Get to know that person and, and get their support for your brand. And what's really interesting as we did this program where it was very simple. We just said, let's select 20 businesses in your local community that you believe other business owners who would buy your MSP services would reference as someone they trust in. The and then let's go and have a page on our website recommending local providers for services. 
So come on and look. Hey, you need a plumber, you need an electrician, you need a, you know, a place to go for printing, right? Whatever business needs there might be, right? Um, we're going to list these folks out with kind of affiliate banner free. And then we're going to go and call on these 20 companies and ask if they'll put our banner on their website. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Got an 80% success rate with getting these folks to put a reciprocal banner on their website. And 40% of leads for this MSP are coming from those residual partners' websites. So you don't have to go expensive. Just go micro local, right? Hyper geo target. Um, work with other businesses in your area, CPA, attorneys, et cetera. Help promote their business, ask them to promote yours, and you'll both grow. So, so, Jen, I want to share a story. So, prior to AppPoint, I had my own little consulting MSP business here in the DC area. And when I started, there was only like three of us. And our offering is to help organizations use SharePoint for project management. It's very specific. So what I did is I looked up the local project management user groups. So I started speaking there. And this was, uh, I remember, in D.C. And then they connected me with the Baltimore user group. So every month they would have a meeting. I would just show up. Sometimes I'm not speaking. I would just show up because that's my audience. And, and they got to know me. And I, I, I got their names. I have a newsletter. I kept writing blogs and tips and tricks on how to use SharePoint for project management. And soon enough, they started reaching out, hiring me. I helped manage their SharePoint environments to run their projects. So, so it sounds simple, but it is. It, it, it's hard to be wrong, but we're, sometimes we're, I think we're overlooking some of the basic things that basic like, block and tackle. And you can hire, you know, if you've got that that family member um, who maybe, you know, is young, right, and aggressive and, and you would love to give them some work, you can hire them to do that, right? They can go and do all all this kind of gooey, as I like to put it, local engagement. Um, and, and I would be remiss, Ducks, if I didn't mention that you can do good work doing this as well, right? You can set up a charitable fund. You can donate to a charitable fund. You can be involved in your local community and give back um, through campaigns like this. And so I think a lot of times you get too fancy when in reality, there are some simple things you can do that are low or no cost in your community to get more business. All right, Janet. So we talked about number one, get to know your audience. Number two, right. make sure you provide uh, good knowledge and good content and good information that people can learn from and, and benefit from. Number three is show up not only online, but also offline, ideally in, in the right. community you serve and where your customers are at. Number four, obviously, uh, just like any business, we are going to spend time and money on this, building your brand, hopefully to attract customers, is how do you measure these things, right? Like, this is one of the often big question mark. How do you measure brand? Because typical demand generation is like how many leads do we get? But with this, what are some of the uh, ideas you have for measuring the investment you have in brand marketing? Yeah, the first thing I'll say is a lot of MSPs don't um, measure at all. Um, and so one of the things we've come up with for it at JSG is an MSP CRO dashboard. So when you think CRO, right, even for a small company, that, that encompasses marketing and sales, right, in, in, its, um, in its entirety. And if you want to be able to measure your brand awareness, you have to set something up, right? So for uh, your marketing plan, right? It says, I'm going to measure certain things. You can measure sentiment. You can measure engagement. Um, the easiest thing I always say is, you know, search engine optimization, if it's right for your website, this will tell you how your brand is resonating because more and more people will find you and engage with you. Um, so if you set up the right metrics to measure brand, then you can. If you just go, hey, we're going to get out there and spray and pray everywhere our brand and hope people, you know, uh, recognize it. And my best story of this, Doc, so I'm going to tell it here, is I was actually talking with a partner a few years back and um, they decided that when people were commuting in their local community, that everybody kind of took this one road. And on this one road was this big cow farm and they bought cow blankets and they put branded cow blankets on the cows 
um, and paid the farmer for this. And this was, you know, arguably one of the worst marketing ideas ever um, because cows roll around in the mud. Cows don't stand by the fence where people can see you, right? Um, they're not really, they're not billboards. Um, and so they spent all that money and a few people said, oh, I saw your, you know, your cow, but it didn't do anything web traffic they didn't have a bigger funnel they didn't have new clients calling their phones weren't ringing right you have to be very careful of, and you have to make sure that you've set some metrics to say if my brand is successful these things will happen great great um great example and great story so from my perspective from measurement right so this is one of the things early on we really looked at how do we measure brands so we came down with three metrics that any organizations, be it an MSP or a large company, I think can can track and it, it's quite practical. So uh, number one is brand awareness. So obviously one of the things we do at Brand is we, we got to know, we, we got to make sure people who don't know us, they know us, right? So brand awareness is the idea of, of do people know you and how do you measure that? It's through, if you want to measure online, it's through things like media mentions. Uh, yeah, did you yeah. Did you get, you know, a shout out from some article or some news? And this is not paid. This is all organic, right? Media mention. Uh, social, right? Are you getting yeah. more followers? Are you getting right. engaged? Is your LinkedIn social selling index score going up. Right. And, and yeah. I'll, I'll give you this right. feedback, Janet, in a second, because this is very, social selling is very important. Yes. Um, and so, so brand awareness is one metric you can track. The next metric is brand engagement. And what we mean by that is for people that already know you, do they love you, right? So knowing you, loving you, and how do we measure that? Well, with your existing customers, for example, do you do NPS surveys? What does that look like? Industry-wide, NPS surveys should be about above 30. That's a good thing. Anything below 30 is not a good thing. If you're not familiar with NPS, look it up. It's something you can do. It's essentially a customer satisfaction type of survey. And then the last thing is around brand advocacy. The idea with brand advocacy is for those that love you, are they promoting you? And you can see this through things like case studies. That's important because wow. case studies can be used for potential new prospects and customers. Awards. Are you getting awards? Are you being awarded like, you know, be it locally or regionally? Because those are important because that, that um, establishes credibility and your expertise. Um, I see a lot of people here, you know, before... I mean, Jen and I can keep going on. Any, any, any thoughts, questions, feedback? You know, would love to hear from you. Uh, just feel free to raise your hand. We'll get you up the stage, and I would love to learn more about what you're doing with brand on how you're jumpstarting your brand. So, if yeah, just I love that, ducks. And while we're waiting for people to talk, I want to answer a couple burning questions I got from folks before they joined. So one was people were saying they were seeing um, a reduced um, efficacy from their LinkedIn posts um, recently. And LinkedIn has changed some algorithms. We're going to talk more about social selling in a couple minutes here. But here's what I will tell you. Um, if you put a link on your LinkedIn post that goes to an outside source, they mm. discount that. So I understand that we want to have people go to our website ultimately, right? What you want to do is have a link to an article on LinkedIn and then have that article on LinkedIn have the link to your website. You get a ton of LinkedIn credit for this. Um, people who are users of social media platforms typically don't want to have to leave the platform to go to another site. And so you get a lot of lift in your brand just from that simple thing of taking the blog that you would have published on your site, still publish it on your site, but also publish it as a LinkedIn um, uh, blog or article as they call it. And then, you know, flip it back to your website from there. One, you'll get a lot more eyes. LinkedIn's going to push you to the top because you don't have an outside link. Um, and then also make sure that that post is at least three paragraphs long and then you have to click the more button because that's the second way you get content credit on LinkedIn. And I'm talking to LinkedIn because, frankly, for most MSPs, it's one of their watering holes for clients. For sure. And, and related to that, LinkedIn loves multimedia content. They do. Videos. And because people engage with that more. So, and, and again, it doesn't have to be overly produced, especially with the tools we have today. Just grab your phone say something meaningful, share meaningful content, and then post it on LinkedIn. 
Yep. Yep. It's so important. And so I, since I didn't see anybody raise their hand, I think we'll bridge into social selling now. So I get asked a lot of times, is social selling the same thing as social media? And it's not right. Social media says we're going to have a corporate handle, a corporate brand. They're going to post content. We're going to try to engage with clients, you know, drive that brand awareness, drive that brand engagement. Social selling says that a person or many people within your company are going to be your brand ambassadors. They're going to use their personal brand, your company's brand, to build your funnel. And what we've seen is that people that do this, and actually Mark uh, Kraus is here from our team. Uh, he's one of the listeners who runs our social selling program. What we've seen is that if your team uh, practices social selling, they are four times more likely to achieve quota. Um, and in the MSP environment, very few sellers are in fact doing social selling. So there's a limited field of competition here as well. Now, again, that social selling could happen on LinkedIn. It could happen on Instagram. It could happen, you know, in any number of places, depending on your ideal customer. But what's critical about social selling is it's kind of a four-part journey. So one, you understand your customers and you change your profile to be a person they would want to talk to. So someone they would want to listen to, someone they would want to listen to. Then it's about creating content that resonates with those customers. Maybe editing your corporate stuff to put a little personal you spin on it. And by the way, as I say this, if you're a CEO listening, you're not immune to this. You should be doing this and casting your shadow of a leader as well. And then it's about with other people's content, customers, prospects, et cetera, engaging with them on the platform, much like you would in real life, right? Asking questions and comments, et cetera. And then making connections on the platform to get connected with the person and not selling them right away when you connect with them because there's nothing worse than that. Nothing leads to an unfollow faster than, hey, I saw you just followed or connected with me, right? Um, and so that four-step process that we teach in our social selling is really about driving a massive impact for MSPs that are practicing it. And again, rather than learning skills, this is a free marketing thing that your company can do. And since we know that our sellers are spending less and less time with clients because one, we're remote a lot and two, clients are using marketing, right? Uh, for the, um, the beginning of the sales journey, this is how your sales team becomes a funnel generation mm -hmm. machine. And so I'm passionate about it because of how many people we've seen it work for. Um, but again, you know, you got to work the plan. So for anybody who's trying to build that marketing funnel, I haven't seen anything work as well as having all your salespeople retrained to do social selling. So, so Janet, do you have a, do you have a story or uh, an anecdote of how effective this was and how it impacted uh, yes. MSP's business? Sure do. So we have one MSP that grew their business 311% within one year. Um, of starting this. They had seven sales reps. All seven were trained on social selling. Um, their marketing team provided content so that the team had, you know, unique, fresh, you know, some fresh content, case studies, white papers, et cetera, you know, docs, as you said, they all, uh, you know, changed up that content to put it in their own brand voice, et cetera. Um, and they dedicated 30 minutes a day to making sure they were on their platform of choice, which was LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Um, and that they were engaging. And then in each sales meeting that their MSP had, everybody read out on how they were doing on their LinkedIn social selling index score. If you don't know your LinkedIn social selling index score, you can Google LinkedIn social selling index score. You're, ta you're tagged in right now to, to uh, LinkedIn. So it'll pull you up. It'll say, you know, get to know my score. And then um, you look at your score. If your score is 70 or over, and you have 5,000 or more connections, your chances right there, once that score gets there, of closing sales and getting funnel go up almost 4X. So getting the score though requires you to do what my 311% MSP growth guide, which was all of the sellers and the senior leaders doing their profile to appeal to the customers, posting content on a consistent basis, three to five days a, uh, a week, engaging with clients and prospects on the platform and then getting driving to the connection, right? I want to connect with you. And then once connected, um, Vlad teaches us this cool 30 day process where we send content, we engage, we talk about issues before we ever try to sell them, right? That process, 311 growth, 
no incremental spend. So that to me is, you know, kind of job number one for our listeners is get to know social selling. If you don't know how to do social selling, uh, Barb Gorbowski, myself, Vlad, we're all on here. Send us, go down to the person's face, click on them. Little dots and you can message the person uh and uh and they'll uh and they'll be happy to get back to you but that so duck that to me has been the biggest game changer for us, uh, this year you know, you know sometimes i um i i hope i, I wish that it wasn't called selling because people i know have, it, it should be really engagement right and it's no different than what we would do in real life i love your point around being disciplined around it like every day but it's, it's like every day it's like 30 minutes, right? Or an hour or what have you. Because it's still different than the real world. If you have a list of contacts you need to call, you do that. Oh, I have to attend this event. I need to talk to three prospects. It's no different online. It's no different. And the yeah. fun part, at least to me, yeah. the fun part, part um, is if you're measuring it, back to your point about always measuring, right? If you're measuring, um, you have a scorecard because LinkedIn does keep score. And you can see the four elements of where your people are succeeding or not succeeding. Content, their profile, engagement, and making connections. There's actually, they score you on all four. And the sales managers at MSPs that I've seen say, I'm going to look at the number, but you have to pull it yourself. Um, they've changed the world. Um, right. And I agree with you. It's about social marketing. It's about social brand building. It's about social awareness. And it leads to a sale. That's right. And, and I've seen it in my experience, too, where, again, just just doing what Janet described has led to not only business. I mean, business is great. But to me, what's exciting, especially when you build your brand, is you forge new relationships. You meet new people that you don't even realize that that you get to meet. So, frankly, for me, when I started doing this is because I can get a hold of key people I want to get hold of it, it, uh, on the customer side or my big companies. But whereas with social, I was able to access them um, versus traditional means. So I think that's another unspoken value that you you you'll find out once you start doing this. Uh, I agree, and I think you know. Again, and I hear I don't know if somebody's not muted, but I'm getting a little feedback, so I apologize for that, guys. Um, so you know, I think there's two things that we always kind of need to do in life if you want to go your funnel, grow your business, et cetera. The first one is, we mentioned already is understanding your clients. The second is getting out there and testing and responding, testing and responding, testing and responding, right? How does it work? What do I need to change? Don't just go with the, oh, I tried it for a week and it didn't, it didn't work for me. Um, it is working for people. So you have to just continue to adjust your, um, your execution until you get it right for your business. And I think we don't talk about that enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Consistency is key. I agree. And just learn, measure, adjust, learn, measure, adjust. Right. It, it does work. So I, I've had people say, oh, I, I tried search engine optimization for my website. I tried social selling. I tried whatever and it didn't work for me. Well, then you need to change how you execute on it. So so I, I saw I saw in our guest uh, or, or somebody listening, I may uh, Bolin told you, uh, but her. Uh, per, if you're able to, I'm going to bring you up on stage. So, Janet, if you don't know Per, Per uh, has led an organization for partners around the world. So he helped really jumpstart IAMCP, and he's worked and talked and met with a lot of partners globally. So I want to bring Per up on stage here. Uh, but I think Per, you have to raise your hand for me to, to be able to do it because I'm not. I don't think I can just bring you up, but. I want to get Per's thoughts on there. You, there you go, on his perspective on partners today and how partners are maximizing this method of building their brands and growing their business. Welcome, Per. Per, I think you're muted. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can unmute at the bottom right. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Here I am. Hi, Dax. Hi, Janet. Hi, all. Uh, so I think that uh, partners need to, I agree with, what, with everything that you have said, partners need to find ways to get in touch with people without necessarily selling. It is more about helping, talking about business problems and talking about how to solve them. And uh, 
I think that the days are gone when people did massive outreach. Unfortunately, people still do that, but it doesn't work. You need to really connect with people in order to build a connection and to uh, understand their pains and understand how you can be the cure for these pains. That's great. So, Pierre, do you see any differences globally? Because I know you work with partners from around the world. Or is it similar across the board on the approach? Or is there some nuances based on where you are? Yeah, I think that the ones that are selling long distance might sometimes be the most eager and perhaps most aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. And they might sometimes try to reach by volume instead of reach by quality. And that is, uh, I think, the wrong wrong approach. Instead, it is better to uh, try to do uh, it the sniper way, to uh, get one connection at each time instead of trying to send out some kind of uh, emails that looks personalized, but in fact, they are automated. Mm -hmm. And then you have the local thing that a lot of business happen when people meet each other in person or they know someone. So the local clusters of business are strong all over the world. And that is no difference whether it is Nigeria or it is Stockholm, Sweden or it is Washington, D.C. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I love, I love, and uh, I think it's so critical. I loved what Per said about, you know, it's almost counterintuitive, I know, for many of us, but stop selling and start engaging. If you engage with people and you add value and you help, ultimately they will buy from you. Um, yeah. And I think we all need to remember that um, when, we, when we practice some of these newer marketing, um, uh, you know, techniques. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, we have a few minutes. I want to call on another person because I know who's an awesome, awesome marketer. Oh, I'm echoing. Thank you. I'm not sure why I'm echoing. Um, but I want to call on Laura. Uh, I know I haven't talked to Laura in, in a while, but we stay connected on LinkedIn. So Laura, if you don't mind raising your hand, I want to get your perspective on building brands and how it's different today, especially for a lot of tech companies and MSPs. Uh, hold on. Let's see. One second. I'm not sure why. Yeah, hold Her on. hand is definitely raised. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it's raised. I don't know why it won't let me <laughs> LinkedIn. Can you do it, uh, Janet? Maybe. It won't let me either. That's so strange. Oh, no. It's stuck. Oh, let's try it again. Yeah. I Yeah. Some. I clicked on allow to speak. Okay, let's try it. All right, we'll try it again. Laura, it looks like it's stuck. The button is stuck. I don't know why LinkedIn is not letting me. But thank you for, uh, for being game. Um, and, and definitely we'll get you up here next time. So, so Jen, any, any closing thoughts? Uh, this, this has been a great conversation before we wrap up. Yeah, it has been. I would say two closing thoughts. One, build your marketing plan first, right? Really and honestly, build that marketing plan, starting with your ideal customer. Um, if you don't know how to do that, uh, Barb Gorogowski, who's here and listening in, or myself or any of the team, uh, happy to you know give you some pointers on that. And then um, the second thing is you must measure what you want to grow. And so having the appropriate measurements for your marketing plan is the other key, I believe, to winning. All right. Oh, there you go. Laura's up here. So, Laura, go ahead. Hi. Sorry. Um, I, this session's really interesting to me. I think as a marketer, I've also managed inside sales as well. And I feel like every organization I'm at, I do a presentation on social selling and kind of, I can, I compare it to dating in a way, like your first date, you're not going to talk the entire time and talk about yourself. You're really going to take those steps to get to know each other, find out what their challenges are and kind of show value before you ask them to be in a relationship. So that's kind of like my opening pitch to sales 
And what's interesting in the beginning of my career is it was very manual and kind of how you had to go about it. But now there's so much software and with AI and things that you can do that can really sadly automate it where you can still do the human touch, but kind of that like, hey, they took an action and now I can like know that they did it and automate the connection, but it's still personalized. So I think it's really interesting kind of the future using different technologies to still personalize it and when people take interest. But it is, but you still need to find the right person and you still need to know what to say exactly to them to connect with them. So I, um, I think that really helps in building your brand. And of course it comes down to trust. So as a salesperson and as a brand, they're going to go with you if they trust you as a company, as an individual, if they see case studies. It's really about just building that trust. Love, love it. Love that. I love that. I love the dating analogy. Uh, last time I dated was 20 years ago. <laughs> thank <laughs> you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Okay, we'll, we'll take one more. Nizar, uh, Nizar, uh, and then, okay, I said, Nizar, I hit allow to speak, so maybe, okay, there you go. Okay. So go ahead. Can, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Loud and clear. Welcome. Thank you very much. This is a very uh, informative session. Uh, so I, my, my thoughts are, are resonating with what Per was saying. It's really, uh, as an MSP, uh, as it says, ma managed solutions provider. Some people say managed services provider. We look at ourselves as managed solutions provider. And I think solving the business problems are are the key. So I'm kind of uh, the old school where I don't know too much about social selling. Uh, you put me in front of the person, I can, I can kind of, you know, understand their problem and be able to articulate a solution for them. So how do you bridge that gap? You know, when you, when we do the, uh, the social selling to me, it's like uh, in the golf analogy, drive for the, for the show and putt for the dough. So how do you, reach that gap where you're putting for the door? That was my question. I, I love that question and that analogy. Um, and so I would say the first thing is there's often a misunderstanding that because you're engaging on social media that you would act differently than you would a person. And that's where people get in trouble. So imagine if you connected with somebody at a live event and the person said, hi, I'm, I'm Ducks and this is what I do. And you would say, hi, I'm Nazar and this is what I do. Um, but on, on a LinkedIn, let's say, for example, a lot of people go, hey, I'm Doc Sun Nazar. I want to sell you something immediately. And you would never do that in person, right? You would never be so rude. You would have to first warm the person up, right? Well, well what are your problems? What do you do? Where are you located? And so it's no different in social. It's just that you're doing that on a flat screen instead of in a 360 world. And so I think what warms that up is having the right content available for people to kind of drill down on and say, look, he's really smart. He knows what he's doing. Look at his posts. Ooh, you know, these are really, really interesting. Um, and then being consistent on your touch to the people you connect with the, much, the same as you would uh, in selling. But Ducks, I don't know if you have some further points there. Spot on. Um, I, I fully agree. And, um, and, and I, 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 I think the the question and the perspective is is really common with a lot of the MSPs there, but I echo Janet's uh, uh, feedback. Thank you, Nizar. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, this has been a great, great conversation. I know, Janet, you need to head to your next uh, session. So everyone, thanks again. Hopefully this was beneficial to you. We're, we're actually posting all the summaries on our blog and uh, we'll share it once it's out there. But same time next month, Jan and I will be back for another awesome conversation around how to grow your MSP, especially in this exciting time of AI and cloud. Exactly. And look, if you need anything in the interim, reach out to myself, uh, Vlad, who's here, Barb, who's here. Um, uh, please, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions. And it was just great, Ducks, as always, to have this chat with you. All right. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Until next time. Bye. You too.